All right, perfect. Welcome, everyone. We're thrilled that you are here to learn more about the agri-science and technology careers programs, more specifically agri-science foundation certification. I am Dominique Delbar. I am a product marketing manager, product marketing manager here at Certiport. And joining us today, we have Nicole Case, who is a content development manager, and we have Sabrina Beck, who's a product manager. So we are thrilled to dive into this new exam to talk a little bit more about how it was developed, why it was developed, and how it will truly prepare learners for rewarding careers in the agri-science industry. With that being said, I'm going to pass the mic over to Sabrina, who's going to talk to us a little bit more about the certification program, and then we'll dive into more about how the, the exam was developed. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Dominique. Um, so do you have the slides ready to go already? The next ones? Or do I need yeah. to share my screen? Sorry. Oh, no, perfect. I got it. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, as uh, Dominique mentioned, this is a new program for sort of Porter Agri-Science and Technology Careers. Um, this a program focuses on uh, the agri-science uh, cluster within the CTE career cluster. Um, these careers that are in this career cluster are really at the intersection of um, agriculture and technology. They focus on operation maintenance, automation, agriculture engineering, and uh, design of agriculture equipment and systems. Um, it includes like innovative farming methods such as precision urban and vertical farming uh, to increase uh, efficiency, productivity, and uh, sustainability in agriculture. Um, it's also crucial to our economic growth. Um, uh, I don't know if you noticed on the, on the, pri on the prior slide, but um, agriculture include, uh, uh, um, agriculture accounts for 4% of uh, the gross domestic product for the U.S. Um, and in some of the developing countries, that can be as much as 25%. Um, the agriculture markets in the U.S. are slated to grow um, from 2023 to the end of this year um, from 81.5 billion to uh, 94.3 billion. Um, and uh, have over um, over 115,000 uh, jobs in in different fields uh, every year. And um, if we go to the next slide, um, uh, taking these into consideration, we wanted to make sure that we could provide a way for job seekers and and uh, and students to validate that they have the skills related to these different agro science fields. Um, because the industry is responsible for addressing vital concerns and necessities um, in uh, food security and sustainability, uh, and because of the number of jobs that are available every, every year, and this is a, a growing uh, channel, we really wanted to make sure that we validated that uh, learners are ready for these entry level jobs um, in food science, uh, soil science, plant science, um, and in sustainable uh, farming technologies. Um, the exam that we have created, um, AgriScience Foundations, uh, has uh, between 40 and 50 items. It is selected response, it's 50 minutes, and uh, the required score, like um, all of our uh, exams, are is a, a weighted 700 out of 1,000 uh, score to earn the certification. So if we go to the next slide, um, these are, um, from a high level, these are the uh, objective areas that we focus on with the um, AgriScience Foundation's exam. Um, health of agriculture systems, US, uh, using and maintaining uh, proper documents, workplace safety and procedures, animal science, plant science, and food safety. And if we do a little bit of a deeper dive into these objectives, you can see that it's really um, focusing on understanding the difference with um, health, health of agriculture systems, understanding the difference between what is healthy, what is unhealthy, um, understanding pest management, um, 
and also a, a big one is using and maintaining documents, making sure that uh, records are complete and accurate, being able to interpret the, the uh, labels of different pesticides and different uh, ingredients and, and, and just different um, chemicals and different things that are used, um, understanding weights and measurements and safety data sheets, understanding how to interpret and use those. Um, workplace safety is also uh, super important, and you can see here that the um, uh, understanding SOPs, um, understanding sanitation, um, and worker protection standards are super important. Um, going to the next slide, uh, these are the other three with animal plant, animal plant science and food safety. Um, being able to understand the the different uses of animals, understanding the different spe uh, species, um, and uh, understanding uh, basic handling and proper handling procedures of these animals, and um, also proper care. Also understanding the biology of plants and uh, nutrients and their delivery, and uh, explaining uh germination and and seeds and all of that the whole plant life cycle and then also food safety um all, understanding the different temperatures um back to microbial growth um different allergens and understanding food contamination um so we want to make sure that our candidates are prepared to take the exam and that they have the the we want to provide the best pathway to success on earning their certification. And with that in mind, we have worked with our learning pro uh, partners to ensure that we do have a courseware that aligns with the objectives of the AgriScience Foundation's uh, certification exam. Um, and that we have a practice test, or sure prep practice test is available on our Geometrics platform. And um, that there are different options as well with learn key and point pull education as uh, so that we so that um so that educators who are integrating this new certification into their existing course can have uh the tools that they that they need that are right for their classroom in order to help their students succeed so with that, I think we can, I'll hand it back to you, Dominique, and we can um, uh, chat a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for telling us a little bit more about the exam and a little bit more about why it was developed. I know that, I mean, developing an exam at, or developing the idea of this product just in general, it just, it doesn't happen overnight. When thinking about Sabrina, the this pathway forward um, that we should pursue proceed to provide some, an agri-science uh, certification, what feedback did you take from educators and the industry and in the product development? Um, yeah, so we, when we first started out with the uh, understanding, CTE in general is a huge area, current technology uh, uh, education is a huge area that helps prepare students uh, for, for workforce. And we have traditionally been very technology focused with um, our programs that we have here, but um, we wanted to make sure that we were providing uh, providing ways for for um, students to get an edge on on the workforce and understanding that not everybody wants to go into technology. And in fact, um, there are so many other areas that are are growing and are so vital to our <clears throat> our ecosystem. As a society, we wanted to make sure that we were in the right areas at the right time. And so we looked at a whole bunch of different data points. Um, we looked at um, the number of uh, courses that are being taught nationally in K-12, uh, the number of headcount. We looked at um, job opportunities and job growth. We looked at earning potential uh, for potential candidates um, when they have a certification. We look at the needs that employers um, have as well in finding qualified workers um, with the skills that they uh, the skills that they they need to fill jobs, and uh, we also talk to educators to understand their needs in the classroom, what things that they uh, what what holes it currently exist, and what different things that they they need to uh, be successful and really be able to focus on their students' education, 
and um, took it all into consideration. And um, agri-science was one of, the, one of the top ones on our list to start with first. And uh, when we finally made that decision and moved forward, and I know uh, Nicole will be able to speak to this a lot more uh, on the content development, but uh, we really do rely on subject matter experts in the field um, in agri-science in various areas, as well as educators to help guide us on what the objective domains should be and to ensure that we are um, assessing the right skills, uh, that the questions are assessing the skills in the right way. And um, yeah, we, we uh, work hand in hand from right from the very beginning with industry experts, with educators um, to make sure that the exams meet the rigor and uh, provide the validation that students need, that employers need. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you for diving into that. Um, yeah, really appreciate that. What I love about it is that it really helps provide like a holistic view into what a learner needs in order to be prepared for mm -hmm. uh, the job market. And I guess, Nicole, this is a, a question for you as you're the content manager over this program, making sure that um, it is testing learners what they need to be tested on. How do you, how is this exam going to prepare learners for their jobs in the future? Um, thanks, Dom. I, I will sort of add to what Sabrina said um, with regards to how we developed um, the exam and um, I'll go through a little bit of the process. Uh, we started this process by gathering subject matter experts, and we wanted to make sure that they encompassed a wide range of skills and backgrounds. Um, we ended up with subject matter experts from nine different states from across the entire country, from Arizona, New York, Ohio, um, and down in Florida, and others in between. And the our subject matter experts included teachers and um, FFA ambassadors, 4-H agents, uh, and some other industry professionals, as well as along with being teachers, all of our subject matter experts also work in the agriculture industry in some capacity um, beyond teaching. The We had experts in urban farm development, seed agronomists, um, experts with experience in large and small scale crop, meat and dairy production um, and greenhouses, nurseries and um, also working in laboratories for um, not just food safety, but um, all other agricultural science stuff that um, that goes along with that. And we met with the subject matter experts and we discussed and identified uh, the, the qualities and skills that the minimally qualified candidate should meet for this exam. Um, we looked at various state standards and courses and um, discussed the skills that potential employers would want someone that has this certification to have. Um, and so we, we covered the skills, knowledge, and abilities that the minimally qualified candidate should be able to demonstrate to get this certification. Um, and while discussing the minimally qualified candidate, we included discussions on potential jobs and what these candidates would be doing um, and what sort of jobs they would be obtaining that this certification would apply to. And many of the skills that we covered in the objectives um, relate to applying knowledge that would be learned in academic programs or through job-related experiences. And we wanted to make sure that the employees were confident in knowing candidates who earn this certification can demonstrate those foundational skills. So um, by applying knowledge that they learned in these courses, rather than just um, giving us information back, we can tell the employers that our candidates have the foundational skills that they're looking for that are listed in those objectives. Yeah, that is, that's perfect. It's, what I really appreciate about it is that I mean, it really does showcase to employers that candidates have the skills that they need, and it's something that an employer can go back, they can check the ODs, they can also see the certificate and have confidence that this employee is ready to work and will require less training and will be uh, ready for success on day one. 
I also, what I also really appreciated about that is that it really does help them stand out against competitors when they're applying for jobs because they can easily prove that, hey, like I have these skills um, and I've proved it through the certification. So thank you. Um, when you're developing an exam, what standards or frameworks do you use to ensure that it aligns with those industry expectations? So I know that we kind of talked about those ODs a little bit, but just to dive in a little more. Sure. Um, for while we were discussing the potential jobs and the, the can't, minimally qualified candidates, we did reference the national agricultural food and natural resource standards that many states use for their agriculture course design. Um, we also looked at um, multiple textbooks, including the, the Pearson Agricultural Textbook and um, uh, our subject matter experts that came from all of the different states and included their knowledge of their specific state standards if they don't didn't use the national ones. Um, so we had Ohio um, that, you know, subject matter experts from Ohio that were able to say these, these objectives that we have aligned with our courseware um, at, at certain spots. And um, we also looked at the uh, multiple foundational course outlines um, from different state programs and um, pulled information from those to guide us in determining the, the, the breadth of knowledge that is needed and how to um, uh, quantify the skills that that these candidates need to demonstrate. And with the wide range of geography and expertise, our subject matter experts were able to align the content with a lot of these different courses and meet those industry expectations. I What I really appreciate about that is that there are multiple points of view taken into consideration because I mean, agriculture in Ohio is not the same as agriculture in California or Florida. So what I appreciate is how you designed it in such a way that it would be applicable to a learner anywhere in the U.S. and that it will help them build that foundation for them to, to continue to grow and learn on. So that's that's really incredible. Um, I know that, I mean, especially in agriculture, there's a lot of things that are, it's very practical, right? Very hands-on. And what do you do to ensure that the questions that are asked in this exam don't only just test conceptual knowledge, um, but also the practical and real world skills that learners need for success in this industry. Um, so one one thing to um, sort of preface my, my response to this uh, with when, when we talk about the wide range of um, the different skills from the different states, uh, we, we did want to focus on sort of know it, having the candidates know that regulations exist and know how different industry documents um, are presented and be able to understand that there are differences and not necessarily know the specific differences. So as you said, there's, you know, between Colorado and Ohio, there's going to be different regulations. There's going to be different um, agricultural needs. And we wanted to make sure that our questions and our objectives were broad enough to cover everything that like to make sure that they it, it covered the concepts of parts of agriculture and understand that there are different regional dif differences in in each region and understanding that those differences exist and so we didn't ask um, specific details about state regulations or regional regulations but knowing that those regulations exist is is how we addressed those differences. Um, and regarding the, the practical real world skills, um, we, we know that candidates will gain practical experience through the agriculture courses or through projects like with um, their FFA and 4-H projects and um, different county fairs or through work experience that they have, um, that, that they've done over the years. Um, and we, embedded this knowledge into our exam. So they need to have the practical experience in order to correctly answer some of the items on the exam. We use um, very real world industry documents and detailed images that as assets in the exam. Um, and 
these items require that candidates find and interpret the information presented in formats they would encounter in the real world and then apply their agricultural knowledge to solve the problems. So they aren't just pulling necessarily straight information off of these documents and you know so, so someone that doesn't have the agricultural knowledge wouldn't necessarily be able to answer the question just by reading it so they're not just being able to to read and it's not a reading comprehension they have to apply their agricultural knowledge for that and if you would like me to show what i mean on these i i, I can do that yeah that would be amazing um let me do you, let me see oh there it is so if i have to Um, so I, can you see my screen? Not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me, oh, I have to click the other button. Yes, we can now. Okay, do you see, I think it's sharing, which, do you see uh, the agriculture test or do you see a little Yes, dog? we see the test drive. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so this is the test, the test drive that can be accessed through the CertiPort website and this shows um, this just gives a feel for some of the questions, and I'm going to just click through and get to some of these to show. So this is a safety data sheet that they would see. Um, and then, as you can see, there's there's multiple questions that are asked about this. Um, and then there's uh, pictures as assets that have um, very specific details that are that they need to look at and apply their knowledge and what they would see. So they it mimics practical experience um but they have to have that experience in order to answer the questions and then i'll show one more so these are this is, again is another label for a pesticide that they would need to look at and the last one is um, a maintenance for you know maintenance recommendations and again they have to go through and answer questions about these so they are getting very real world experiences and we're we are providing those sort of practical experiences in the format that we are able to. So we do expect that the, the practical knowledge is, is there and we build on that as a foundation. Absolutely, that totally makes sense. I know that it's recommended that I believe 150 hours of, of pre preparation is recommended before a learner even attempts the certification exam. And so I, I really do appreciate that, how the best preparation is to get students in an F FFA club or to, um, yeah, develop that hands-on experience and that hands-on experience is what will prep, will assist in the preparation for the certification exam. Um, and those who do that will be more likely to pass. So that totally makes sense. And I appreciate you sharing the test drive too. Yeah. I, I think there's some awesome examples in there. Um, I know that, I mean, in, as, an indus as in any industry, um, the standards continue to evolve over time. What is the standard in 2024? Well, well might not be the standard in 2025 or in 2030, as it wasn't the standard maybe in 2015. So my question is, as things continue to change, as industries and educational standards evolve, how do we ensure that the exam continues to maintain its rigor and relevance over time? And this question is for both Sabrina and Nicole, whoever. I can take it first, Sabrina, and if you wanna tag, add, add on to the end, we can do that. Does that work? Okay, yeah. Um, so our general, policy is that our goal is to ensure candidates are ready for the workforce and we review the content of all the exams frequently and ensure that the content is relevant and up to date with evolving technology and standards. We maintain communication with our subject matter experts to evaluate any changes in the industry and identify if there are any shifts in the content or courseware that um, no longer aligns with our standards or the industry expectations. Um, and this comes with different emerging technologies and um, as things shift over the course of their, the, the lifetime of the courses. We evaluate the performance of the exams and individual items frequently as well to ensure fairness and re reliability. And we address any performance or bias issues in, indicated in our data that we get back with um, internally and with our subject matter experts to revise as necessary and uh, adjust accordingly. 
So I'll hand it off to you, Sabrina. Yeah, um, just to add on to what Nicole said, we do we do uh, keep our um, finger basically on the pulse of industry and um, are always uh, making sure that we're we're following uh, trends to understand uh, improvements in technology or and in policies and different things that we may need to uh, address within our exams. Um, under normal, like traditionally, uh, these changes are not quickly evolving, if that makes sense. So usually when we do do our, our reviews, um, there aren't any like major changes. And uh, we tend to um, do objective domain refreshes, as we call them, like to really refine those in just every few years. Um, and and, and we do make sure that we're um, we're always in step with our subject matter experts, our industry experts, uh, to make sure that we are um, making the changes that 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 the industry needs uh, to validate those skills, and that we are keeping everything relevant. Um, but like Nicole said, we are constantly reviewing our exams to make sure that the performance is where we expect it to be. That the items in the exams are performing uh, appropriately. And uh, the, the, uh, Nicole's team is awesome about making changes and finessing different things as they can come up with the uh, psychometric data and uh, everything else, the, all the different metrics that they, they watch those item performance uh, with. And so we have a very rigorous process to ensure that our exams meet the standard and continue to meet the standard and to make sure that we can update the exams in a timely manner um, to follow industry trend. Yeah, that's perfect. And what I appreciate too, you mentioned, you both mentioned how the questions, the items themselves are frequently reviewed. What I really appreciate about what um, is done is that when a teacher is taking an exam or a student's taking an exam and if there's feedback, you can submit that feedback right there and all the feedback is reviewed. So it can continue, like you're saying, stay fair, stay relevant, mm -hmm. and make sure that um, the questions that are being asked are thoughtful and meaningful and are doing what we want them to do. So I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you both taking the time today to talk more about this exam, about how it was developed and how it will truly prepare a candidate for the workforce so they can start their entry-level job in the agriculture world and agriculture technology and have a strong foundation as they're uh, continuing to grow within the industry. So thank you both. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out. You'll receive an email after this with the, the link to watch, but you're also welcome to respond directly to the email and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have, or you can always reach out to your certiport representative or customer support and we will get you your answers. Thank you guys again so, so much and we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye.